Want to get better at World of Tanks? I'm your Watt Coach, 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. Welcome back to Coach's Corner, guys. Today we revisit the map Mannerheim line, and we are featuring our friend Blackshot in his Object 430. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so let's look at the vehicle lineup real quick. First off the bat, we see there's only two heavies, meaning the south side of the map may be pretty light. However, we do see one, two assault tank destroyers on one side, and at least, oh, well, I guess you could count the HDC, but in a bottom two lineup, not super assault-like. So the bottom side of the map could be pretty light on enemies. We do have a lot of mediums making up this lineup. There's only one arty, so north is a pretty safe play. Uh, we do got to be aware that they do have a lot of sniping vehicles, including the Leo. So going north could be pretty dangerous if we are pushing through on this map. OK, so knowing the lineup, let's take a look at the mini map. So I would say in the 430 here, there is a few there's really maybe two good options to take. You can head up north where most mobile vehicles tend to go out this way. Or you could even, with your good turret armor, you could assist the heavies down in the south here. Go that way, head down here. So given that there's not that many heavies on this map, or in this particular lineup, um, I would probably lean towards the north just looking at the vehicle lineup. Other than that, there's not a whole lot else to say about mediums on Mannerheim line. Um, there are some good areas for light tanks to spot, such as in this bush here. There's actually a pretty decent bush up in this area that gives you pretty good little spotting through here. You can spot their vehicles pushing into the heavy area. But anyways, let's get into this replay and see how we do. Guys, if you'd like to have your replay featured on Coach's Corner, down in the description will be a link to my Discord. And inside the Discord, there's a channel called Coach's Corner. If you throw your replays into those channels, there is a good chance that you could be featured on the uh, YouTube channel here. Also, just a reminder that I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday in the evenings. So if uh, you guys have additional questions after watching this replay, feel free to drop into the Twitch channel and ask me there. All right, so we see Blackshot is headed to the north. This is probably the play that I would have made as well. It is pretty dangerous crossing this gap. So I would say, um, given how many tank destroyers there are, I may have maybe gone a little bit more like where the Lanson went out more outside of this way. So if a medium tank on the red team heads up into this area on the mini map, they can spot this crossing pretty easily in this gap. So if there's a tank destroyer up here, they could have shots. If there's mediums or tank destroyers over here, they'll have shots or even the light tank will also have shots. So the crossing that you're trying to make in this area is pretty dangerous. And the further away you are from their view range, the safer you'll be. The one thing you want to be careful about is pausing in this gap because you are exposed here, here, and up in this area here. So it can be a risky crossing. You just want to do it as quickly as possible. OK, their T-54 is making an interesting play. I don't think I would have taken my tank there. We see a Challenger up top. OK, so it looks like we have a Type 62 over here. The T-54 is getting behind this rock. We've got a Challenger up top. Um, we're still not safe from this area, right in this area here. But you may be able to pause and take a shot at this Challenger, because I don't think you've been spotted yet. Yeah, I didn't hear your six cents go off, so you should be okay to take the shot. Yep, and then just keep moving. So the 430 is more of a brawler than the sniper, so you want to get in close to vehicles when you can. But that shot worked out for us. Look at this T-54 with this hyper-aggressive play. He's very overextended in the area that he's at. So if he's not careful, your friendly Udez will have shots this way. You could get up here and have shots this way, or... You could end up just heading down there and digging him out. You are a top tier medium and he is a top tier medium. So 
you can't be relying on your tier 7s to dig out a tier 9 in that position. You're probably going to have to end up doing it yourself. This is a risky play, but I, I think it's okay to make this play. Uh, it's super risky now that we've seen this auto loader right here. He will have shots going this way, so you want to get into this dip quickly to eliminate him from cross from hitting your crossing here. There's also that challenger still poking up there, although he's low on health, so I doubt if he stays up there he'll survive. So hopefully he'll he'll back down or, or end up dying in that area. So your 1357 is going in there. Okay, the challenger just missed a shot on you. You got lucky on that one. This 1357 is uh, making some bold plays. So it looks like we're going to challenge the T-54 here. So you may want to be side scraping this for your best chance. Okay, so he tracked you because you exposed your front drive wheel here. Um, what you want to do in this scenario, especially since there's only one arty and the Crusader doesn't have like, can't remember if that one doesn't have great range or not. So what you want to do is actually point your hull like this, if you can, and then reverse your hull this way while aiming your gun at him this way. That way you create an auto bounce surface on the side of your tank, and then you make a very small penetrable area in this area. So if he ends up trying to snapshot you, um, it's more likely that he'll miss or bounce. So you want to orient your vehicle in a position where he'll miss or bounce because you have, well, you had nearly full hit points. He had pretty high health hit points. So what you want to do is make sure that you make good trades in this area. Right now we're one for one. You have the alpha advantage. So you want to be making sure that he doesn't get two shots for every one of yours. At the very least, that's what you need to make sure that you're doing. So we're going to spend the kit to back up. Okay, now it uh, looks like we might be trying to square up there. So he just fired, definitely pull out, take your shot. Yeah, the 1357 was everything that you needed in this area. I would just go for another shot. Yep, definitely get your another shot in. Oh, it's too bad that didn't high roll on him. The Centurion is in the middle of the map looking for you. This is wise to back up because you would be taking fire from two directions if you stay here. Looks like the T2065 is just going to dunk him. <laughs> he dunks him. Be careful. Don't push in. Don't push in. Okay, and here's why. So if we look, you know, let's just zoom into the minimap here. So if we look at this, we've got two tanks that are coming up here. Okay. Granted, this Lanson is providing some pressure pointing this way, but you're kind of in a goofy area because you have these two vehicles, which will have shots this way. And then you have this Centurion, which gives you shots this way. So if you end up pushing up through this middle area, you'll be pushing into a crossfire. And it's really difficult to orient your tank to receive shots from two directions, especially when they're on the opposite side of the map. So what you want to do is either retreat back the way you came. Well, obviously you can't. You got to kind of go that way. There's like a little ridge right there. Um, or wait for one of these two areas to turn away. So just as an FYI, it's, it's kind of dangerous to keep pushing through. Yeah, I see you waiting on the scent here. That's that's smart. Although if you can help your Lancer T-54 out, help against the T-54. Okay, the Centurion has moved. This is huge. So this Centurion has backed off of this center position, giving you free reign in this middle area here. So definitely consider poking out far enough to get shots at the T-54E1. Although now that the Lanson is gone, it's less important to get shots on him, but he is the next available target, given that the Centurion is no longer paying attention to the middle of the map. You could even use that bush, I would think. Yeah. Uh, no, you may not have the elevation that you need. So if he's down in that dip, you won't have shots on him. Um, you could push on the IS, but that would still push you in a crossfire here. Could have shots on the Scorpion if he backs up. Your T2065 has decided to just go ham, it looks like. This is smart. I would go towards the E1 as well, especially since he's a one-shot for you. Taking out that E1 gives your team a much better chance at winning this flank. 
Okay, the Leo's been spotted in the south. The E1 is dead. You know there's a Type 590 to your right, and there's an IS straight in front of you. You should proxy him before he sees you. If you can get an early shot off before he rotates, almost. Now you're backing up. So once again, what I would do in this scenario here, what you want to do is, again, angle your tank so the front is facing the rock. Okay, not like this precise angle. Um, and then you want to reverse out while you aim your gun at him. Wow, that is grade A drawing right there. So what that does, so what you want to do is basically make it so your gun is um, is pointing basically to the inside of your track. Because you don't want to over angle the side of your tank. You want it just enough to be an auto bounce. That way, the only area that he has to shoot you is like a sliver of the front of your tank and then a sliver of the lower plate. Granted, you're still showing him an area that he can penetrate, but it's a lot smaller than driving at him, giving him the whole front side of your tank. OK, you can still time your damage well where you see him miss or see him fire and then you can roll in and, and do damage. So he missed, so you should be able to get another shot in before he reloads. You might kill him if you high roll. See, again, so what we did is we exposed the side of our tank when maybe we didn't need to. Um, so one thing that is interesting, I would have expected to reload before him, but he's not using the 122. And I probably could have identified that by just looking at the gun barrel. He's using a gun that can reload faster than yours, so maybe that's a free 200 damage to learn that information. But at this point, um, you should be able to just finish him off. He may still re out reload you. So I still think it's worth just pointing the front of your tank at this wall here and then pointing your gun that way and then reversing out again to reduce the amount of time and amount of exposure that you have against his gun. I think he might out reload you. OK, so he dies from the st 2 and now you have the Type 59 and the Leo behind you. OK, so one thing I want to um, point out here really quick. Let's actually, you know what? Let's look at the minimap a little bit closer so, so I can really point it out. Whoop, there we go. So right now, we don't actually really know where the Leo is. Um, the Scorpion G, we're not really sure about either. For whatever reason, your T2065 drove into here. I don't think that that's a good play. If I was at T2065, I would be following you because you have two tanks here, a couple tanks here, and this type is by himself. You guys should just all focus on this type to get him out quickly. You can see artillery just pinged in this area. The type should die really fast and you should you should actively be trying to destroy the type quickly because not because he's a threat to you. I mean, you could be in a little bit of a crossfire, right? If the uh, if the Leo is in this little hull down area over here, then you're in a pretty bad position. But since you haven't taken damage yet, I think you might be OK in that position. So what you want to do is as quickly as possible, take out this type five nine and not because he's a danger to you, like he's going to be shooting behind you. Um, obviously, he has his own problems in front of him. But the longer these two take to kill him, the longer it's going to take for them to come over here and support you. So if you turn around and head into this area, you're going to be against a T-30, a Leo, a Scorpion G somewhere. I got to look at the, the player lineup to see what else is unspotted. But there's a lot of tanks over here, and it's going to take them a couple minutes to finish off this Type 59, depending on how much health he has right here. Um, but the, more, the less time that the T-95 is battling and the more time that he's using to move up, the quicker that you'll have a lot of pressure over here as to uh, instead of just very little, right? All right, let's continue. So I see you looking for shots on the type. This is a good call. Nice damage there. He's three shots away from death. I would keep pressure on him. Oh, that's an unfortunate bounce. All right, your STA just took damage. So I would say I would probably, uh, I guess it's a tough call because he's a one shot for all three tanks over here. He should die quickly and Artie is still pinging him. So maybe you can turn around right now. Um, that's not a bad plan, although I would say you're still making a big risk here. So let's let's do a quick little analysis. 
So we have a Kanonen Jagdpanzer that's still unspotted, a Stur Emil, which is still unspotted. We know um we know the Leo is probably somewhere back there. The T30 I'm not worried about. The T28 or the Scorpion, right? They're not they're not in the area. So if we look at the minimap, where are these guys? Well, the Leo or the Kanonen Jagdpanzer could be somewhere over here. They could be somewhere over here. They could be somewhere over here. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different areas that these tanks could be in. And if we look at your view range, you don't even have max view range. So you're not going to be able to outspot even the tier 8 in this instance, especially if the, the Kanonen Jagdpanzer is using Binox. So what you want to do is get as close as possible, especially considering your tank is more built for brawling, has better armor, not great accuracy. So you want to be as close as you can before you're forced to engage these vehicles. You also have this issue of two tanks holding up these three, well, four if you include the T-28. So what you need to do is alleviate these pressure points. Um, if you get in here by yourself, you stand a pretty bad chance against these tanks that you don't know where they are, right? So there's a few options you could take here. You could try and sweep back this way and then down in here and then come up here. Then you'll probably have to brawl a T-30 and possibly the Scorpion G. That's risky. If these guys manage to push these guys back, but then you'll have shots going this way from up there. So I would say if we just zoom out of this minimap real quick. I would say the pathing path that me personally, especially that T-28 being a one shot, the pathing that I personally would probably have taken is going this way so that I could then come up here and play these soft ridges out this way. Or there's a, another path that puts you in front of this rock out this way. This gets me close and I can approach without being lit or spotted and I can get very, very close without exposing myself to damage. If you take the pathing path that you're taking to get into this way, then you're exposed from anything out here, possibly anything back in here, and possibly out here, the entire pathing path to that area. So I would say that this is probably the safer pathing path to close in on your enemies over here. Um, but again, you want to make sure that, you know, when you start closing in on this base, because there's a lot of camouflage cover, you want to make sure that you have overwhelming numbers so that as someone YOLO scouts, the rest of the team can do damage. Because if you YOLO scout and you can't damage them enough yourself, then you die. The, the worst case scenario in these sort of kind of close battles where you're closing in on the enemy is that you all go in one at a time and then you lose all your health one at a time. And that's how you end up losing or throwing these games. So your best bet here is literally to try and group your team quicker and the way that you do that is by eliminating the things that are in their way, like the Type 59, right? So you just lost your STA-2 to the Type 59. So the Type 59 did kill the STA-2. That was actually very smart, the Type 59. And you took damage from the Leo. So you'd be up another 443, 34 health right now if you didn't take this path thing. However, there is an advantage to the area that you took, okay? If you're over here, or if you're over here, you have this excellent haul down, very gentle hill that you can play in because you don't have great gun depression, but you have good turret armor. However, the position you're in offers the two best things. It provides camouflage in the form of this bush, and it provides cover in the form of this rock. So you have both hard and soft cover in one location that you can then work against the T-30, especially since he's not looking at you. There's a Scorpion G somewhere down in this area, and you know that the Leo is somewhere over here. Looks like we're going to try and get a shot in the T-30. You could pen that. Oh, yeah, that's easier. Well, you could have penned the engine deck. It's just too bad that he moved right when he... Uh, was about to get hit there. Okay, so that T-28 is holding his own still somehow. That Type 59 is still alive, okay? Look at this, look at this. So he killed your STA-2, your Scorpion G is now a high roll away from death, and your T-95 has gone the long way around to pinch him off 
which again exposes both of those allies to more artillery fire. Even though he was a one shot and it seemed like a safe bet to just drive away, I still think focusing on trying to get that kill would have been better off than pushing forward because now you're here by yourself waiting for your team to collapse on him. Okay, so the Type 59 finally died and now you basically still have to wait for your team to come around to support you. Oh, his sixth sense went off. He's like, mm, maybe I don't want to make this poke. You can penetrate the cupola on that tank. It's just a really tough accuracy shot. This is the right move. Play patiently, wait for your T95 to come up here because you can realistically die on a single scouting run from just a shot from the from the Leo. And oh, this is good. Huge opportunity here. Take him, track him if you can. You are spotted, so be careful. You don't know where the Kanona and Jagdpanzer is. This is probably smart to wait until you go dark, poke out again, and he's safe. So it's too bad that we didn't get more than one shot out of that. It's good to stay patient in this area, though. Continue to wait for your team to collapse in this area. It's going to be very difficult for them to dig out the Shura meal while, you, while they have cover in the back. This is still a very close game. That was big. Taking that shot there was big. The T-30 is back up. That was a huge kill. Taking out the T-30 was a big, big deal. So now, we don't really know where the Scorpion G went. Um, if we look at the minimap, he may, he may have gone this way to do a big brain flanking maneuver this way. Okay. Um, otherwise, he should have come up here. I guess he could also make a play out this way. Or he could even be going for Artie, which would be really surprising for me because there's so many enemies collapsing on his base. He might even be tipped over, actually. If he made this drop here, I've seen some pretty goofy guys get like stuck in this area from making this play. So he might actually be stuck down there. In which case... I'm not sure how much health is on these guys. We've got, actually, let's see. They're both full health. It still might be worth waiting for them to come closer so that if one of you spots, the others can do damage. The big thing is that you have your T95 here, and he's honestly the ideal scouting tank in this scenario because he can take the hits while pushing in. And if he's smart, he's going to face his armor this direction and not worry about the Stura meal or the Scorpion G from the south because he stands to take more damage from the Kanonen Jagdpanzer and the Leo. And it's more important to take those tanks out than it is the other two. But he's still taking a risk at driving into a crossfire. That I think might have been blind damage. It's unfortunate he got spotted there. You can actually pen the front of the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with HE rounds. Although it's risky because if you have a shot on the Leo, that's better off with uh, with AP rounds. Already just missed. So your Scorpion G has moved in. So what I would do right now, I want to hunt for that Scorpion. Uh, it'd be really risky. What I would look to do is maybe wait to see when the Leo fires and then make the play to get down into here. Because I want to clean up this guy so that these guys can keep pressure moving in this way because I want my team collapsing all at the same time instead of us going in one at a time and getting picked apart. This is smart though. One thing I want to point out is that you allowed your T95 to come in here and work this corner. If the T95 is trying to work around you in a casemate TD, it can be very, very tedious, especially since you have a rotating turret and more maneuverability. Always defer the corner to a casemate TD and work yourself around behind him especially a T95 because you can essentially use him as cover anyways. And it's going to be easier for him to not try and compete with you for an angle around this rock. Tree down on the right. So he, the Leo is busy building a nest here. You know what you might be able to do? If you bailed down into this area and came up here like this, 
you might have shots on the Kanonen, and you might have shots on wherever that Scorpion G went. Although it looks like your T95 is rolling his butt in, so I would definitely stay in this area and keep trying to support his play. And the T54E1 and the T28HTC are still hesitating to push, which is surprising to me. The T54 is still full health. He should have, like, no reservations going in on that Stura meal. No one is spotted again. Okay, he's a one shot. That's a big deal. The T95 just took one from the Kanonen. He's down to 700 health. Actually, that's pretty dangerous. Crossing here is probably a good idea, actually. Go down after the... Ooh, he missed. I would keep going. I would eliminate the Scorpion because that might be what's holding up your T54. Oh, he's one shot. Okay. I didn't realize he was that low on health. Now his his reservation makes sense to me. So what I would do as you're going into this area, I would load HE. You only have two rounds. I'd probably take maybe a little more HE than two, but HE will help get rid of the Scorpion quickly. Oh, you do reload HE. That's very smart because you can pen the uh, Scorpion with HE very easily. Is he here? Ha! Ah! That's the bottom of his tank. Oh, man, that must have felt good. So all that's left is the Leo and the Crusader. You have to be careful. All of your tanks are nearly one shots. If the T-54 gets hit by Artie and the Leo, he dies. So this is another one of those weird set. Oh, did he just get hit by him? He did. You are all one shots. This is actually a very close game still. Okay, so the Leo did get spotted. Let's see if you can get around in. You bounced. Go in now. Go in now. Okay, and here's why. There is a lip right here, and he has to expose a lot of his tank in order to shoot you. And you notice that he's both looking this way, and he's backing down. So while he's backing down and looking this way, although you did get spotted, now would be the ideal time to approach. Because if he pokes back up while he's lit, he takes damage. I mean, you might die for it, but right now is the perfect time to make pressure because you still have every single tank alive on your team, even though they're all one shots. And Artie just missed him. That's unfortunate. If Artie had, had hit him and stunned him, then I definitely would be going in to make pressure. I would still be going in to make pressure. The Scorpion G is probably going to die here going in and nobody's el nobody else is going to be able to get shots. Yeah, I would probably, well, now might not be a good time to go in, but earlier I probably would have made pressure sooner. Well, your already has pretty high fire rate. It's risky to be poking back and forth on the rock. You could try and figure out what bush he's in by using sixth sense. Um, but somebody's going to have to move in and take the hit. So you did get spotted on that side. So it looks like he's backed up a little bit. It looks like your scorpion is going in. Okay, so here's the thing. All right. If you push in and you die on the way, this scorpion will now be able to poke on him without fear of being shot at because he'll be on reload for at least about eight seconds, eight to nine seconds. So the scorpion should have enough time to get another shot in and then maybe the M12 can finish him. Or... If he doesn't kill you, okay, if you move in, he doesn't kill you, but he does kill the scorpion, then you will have enough time to put a shot in. And there's a chance that he could low roll you and you'd stay alive. Looks like the T28 is moving in. The 2D4E1 is overwatching. The T28 is spotted. So the Leo's got to be looking at one of these three tanks. It, I would be going in. There's two tanks that are making pressure right now. Move together. Look at the T20 is communicating. Move together. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> You're hesitating. I can see. I'm surprised that T28 made it that far without dying. Now, now, now. Just go in. You have to close the distance because you can't let him win the vision game. I don't think I... I the Crusader, it's important to kill. I don't think I'd stop for the kill. I'd look for the... Yeah. There you go. That was huge. Getting the Leo kill there was huge because the T-54 hit him. Now you can take your time on the Crusader. 
That was a remarkably close game. And it was actually your T28 HTC that actually helped win that match pretty significantly at the end there. Um, this was a really good match. You put down a lot of damage and you really didn't make that many mistakes. All I did was point out to you maybe some of the areas where you could have lost less health. Um, otherwise, this was a pretty flawless performance. So thanks, Blackshot, for sending this in. And guys, I will see you on the next Coach's Corner.